One of the biggest academic misconceptions is that you need to read a research paper from the beginning, aka from the title and the abstract, to the end, the conclusion and the references. And that is absolutely not the case. Yes, sometimes you may need to read into the depth and you need to read into the method and the justification and the conclusion and the results. Yes, sometimes that is appropriate, but sometimes it is not. Sometimes you just need to skim the paper and that is also okay. And that there is a way that you're able to do that and get the information that you want efficiently. In today's video, I'm going to be going through the traditional method of reading using pen and paper, reading a paper, skimming it in a way that allows you to read as quickly and as efficiently as possible, taking out the information that you most need. And I'm then going to go through an AI platform that allows you to ask it questions based off of that research paper. Really cool. So you can ask direct questions about that paper that allows you to understand it further. The first thing you want to look at are the keywords within the title. So just to quickly get a brief overview as to what this title is about, they're looking at TKIs, they're looking at contractile force in rats and it's an engineered heart tissue, okay? So quick overview as to what that looks like. The next thing you want to go to is look at the abstract. So every abstract is laid out slightly differently, but in this case, you can clearly see the introduction, the method, and then the conclusion. Um, so what you want to do here is just give yourself a little look and you know briefly look through it, understand what the background is, they're saying what the gap in literature is, they're looking at the mode of toxicity and trying to understand that, and then just quickly looking at the results to understand and gauge what's happening here. That's about as far as you need to know. Then, you're moving on to the introduction. In the introduction, I typically tend to stop at the first paragraph, so that's just this first paragraph here, to understand the background of this particular topic if I don't know it already. And then I want to move on to the last paragraph of the introduction, so that's this one here. Because what you'll find in this last paragraph is people, um, usually what they'll list here are points about um, any limitations, what they're doing in this study. Uh, here you're saying in this study we analysed it and it just gives a bit of information that you might need to know. I then move on to the, I skip the methods and materials, and this, remember, this is for skimming. So this is not to fully understand, this is just for skimming. I skip to the results. Now, in the results, um, there are different ways, again, that papers might show you some results, but you want to kind of scroll through to understand the figures for the most part, and if they do use subheadings, to understand any subheadings. So in this case, they haven't used subheadings, and they just have figures. So what I'll tend to do is look at each figure and try to kind of, like, understand what they are. Again, I'll kind of focus on the first sort of sentences and the last sentences on, of each paragraph. So as you can see in the last sentence here, they say this could indicate that this drug is inhibiting. So that's already told me what the result is. I don't really need to spend time reading this whole paragraph here. I then will go through and take a look at the diagrams and take a look at kind of the figures they've given me and you can kind of try to find and look at some patterns that stand out to you and try to understand what those might mean. You then will skip through all the results and you land at the conclusion. So I'm skipping through the results here and I'm landing at the conclusion. So this conclusion isn't, it's kind of all mixed up. It's mixed up with the, the methods, the results. But here's the conclusion. Now this is a really nice kind of conclusion. It summarizes what it is that's been shown. At this point, you understand what the, the summary is of this paper. You don't really need to go any further. But one thing that you could look out for, which is quite helpful, is to understand what the limitations of this paper is. So as you can see here, it says limitation of this study, and there is a, a little paragraph that gives you that detail here. If you can't find it by just giving a quick skim, do control F and search for the word limitation, then you'll probably find somewhere that they've mentioned it, maybe within the methods or maybe within the results. And this is really helpful. Again, if you're writing or you're using this for a literature review, you are going to know, you are going to want to know what the limitations are. So that's really important as well. Lastly, again, this is, you know, for a quick skim, you want to go to your references and just take a quick look at the references and pull out any references that you think could be useful. So when I was reading, I noticed that reference number four gave me a good background on the topic and they were saying that these the methods they used were taken from this paper. So I think this would be a good paper to take a look at for further reading. 
Um, again, I think um, number 25 is a really good paper, as they mentioned it in one of the results, saying that they've kind of uh, found similar results here. So I'll pull out this reference as well. Okay, so this is fantastic. It's a really, really quick, brief skim of the paper, which allows you to understand what the methods are, what the results were, and what the key highlights are without going into the full depth. If you do need to understand it in more depth, of course, take your time to read it in more depth, of course. But for this purpose, we don't need to know more than just those points. Now that you've read the paper and you've quickly skimmed through it, you want to upload it to this website called Explain Paper and I'll show you what that looks like. So I've uploaded my paper onto um, Explain Paper, you upload the PDF or you can give the link to the website um, for the paper. And then what you can do is you can ask it to explain different parts of this paper at a different level. So let's say I want to explain this part I can customize my explanation, so I can say make it uh, really basic for a five-year-old, middle school, high school, undergrad, graduate, or for an expert. I'm gonna say for an undergrad because I think I just want a more general understanding of it. And as you can see, it gives you a really nice background and understanding um, of this particular topic. So it gives you a background um, and then it gives you related resources. So I'm assuming these are going to be other websites. Oh my gosh, this is really good. It gives you actual research papers that are linked to explain paper. Let's try a different thing. So actually, what something that I tried, which I think is really important, is as I mentioned to you earlier, when you're reading your figures and you're trying to understand them, one thing you should look at are the legends. So I've just highlighted one of the figure legends, so figure two figure legends, and I'm going to say to explain it to me because I find that, especially when you're reading figures and you're trying to understand papers for the first time, just trying to understand what they're saying can be really difficult. So in this case, it says, Figure, figure two shows the results of an experiment conducted on EHT, so that's really good, in the presence of TKIs and controls. Panel A displays this, panel B displays that, and it just goes into a bit, it just makes it a little bit more simple. Um, and you can ask a follow-up question as well. So that's really nice. Um, and then there's related resources too. So I think this is really nice. And, and the fact that you're able to get an explanation on maybe some aspects of the literature that you didn't understand is really helpful. The things I'd ask it about would be um, what the main findings are, what the methods were, and why the justification was for the methods used. I'd ask about the implications of results, the main conclusions, and also any limitations that were found in the paper. These are all things that tell me whether or not this is something that I want to take forward and use in my literature review in the future, or use to um, indicate anything in my own research. So using this method, you are combining traditional reading of you know, a research paper with AI. So you're taking both aspects, bringing it together and really understanding the paper as efficiently and as quickly as possible without having to read the paper from front to back. Like I said, this applies for some papers, but not for all. So take it with a pinch of salt, use it where, where necessary. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. And let me know if you are planning on starting to read some literature, if you're starting a PhD program soon, or if you're starting university soon, let me know if you're planning on a, a adopting this method. And if you do adopt it, let me know if you find it useful. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.